Hey everybody and welcome back to the Paperless Movement YouTube channel. Today I'm very excited because my good friend Renat Gabitov prepared an awesome deep dive into Bardeen. For those of you who don't know Bardeen yet, it's a great alternative to Sapia. Sapia, if you don't know what this is, it's to automate tasks and connect different tools with each other. One of the features I'm really excited about using Bardeen is to scrape websites. So this means data collection is now easier than ever. What all this means Renat will show you now. So let's dive in. Hello, my name is Renat from Bardeen AI and it's been over a year since the last paperless movement video. A lot has changed, not just the studio. In today's video, we're diving into the i framework and how Bardeen as a tool relates to it. I'll teach you how to build AI automations, scrape information from pretty much any website and take care of every single letter in the i framework. Super excited, let's dive in. But first, what is Bardeen exactly? It's a browser extension that allows you to automate your manual workflow. So let's go ahead and add this extension to our browser. I'll leave a link to this in the post. The first order of business, let's go ahead and click on this puzzle icon and pin the Bardeen Chrome extension so that we can open it from anywhere with a click of a button. The first tab is called Playbooks. This is what we call automations that you can trigger with one click. Bardeen already comes with hundreds of pre-built automations. So what you can do is click on this filter over here, pick one of your favorite apps such as Gmail and find the automation that you like. Here's a cool one. Copy all email attachments to Google Drive. Sounds pretty good to me. I'll definitely want to try it out later. I'm going to click on this plus icon and this playbook is going to show up here in my playbooks tab. The second tab is called autobooks. Those are the automations that run periodically, either when something happens in one of your apps or on a schedule. Let's click on explore over here and browse through a list of autobooks. For example, you can send a daily email. This one sounds good as well. So let's also add this auto book this time to my auto books tab. You can click on this auto book and configure different variables such as when in the day to send the email, the recipient, the subject line and the contents of the email. But that's for later. Finally, you can create your custom automation. So click on this create auto book button over here. And then on the left side, you will see all of the available apps that you have access to. And you can click on this plus icon to browse through additional apps. Once you connected your app, you can click on one of them and see all of the actions available with that app. You can also click on Bardeen to see all of the actions that Bardeen already comes with. For example, I can create a browser notification and here we have different arguments. The first one is message. I can say something like, hello world. Then we have the title, okay there, and the URL tab. Let's do Bardeen AI, click on done. Let's click on done again and complete our first automation by giving it the name. Let's call this notification, click on save. And there we have our very first custom playbook. You can click on it to trigger it. And just like this, a notification was sent. Hello world. We can click on the notification to open the website. Pretty cool, right? But there is something that I've been itching to show you this entire time, artificial intelligence. Let's open Bardeen with a shortcut option B. And then here in the search bar, I can type this exact automation and have AI created. Let's do show browser notification that says hello world and takes me to when I click on it. Hit enter and Bardeen has built this entire automation by itself. So let's click on yes and let's click on the playbook to execute it. And then here we have this playbook executed and it works perfectly. And it works with very sophisticated automations, the ones that can scrape information from the web. So now technically you do not even need to know how to use those sophisticated no code tools. You can build automations by just typing what you want done. That's Bardeen. Now, as a member of the paperless movement, you probably already know that the tools are only as powerful as the systems within which they operate. So let's break down Bardeen within the i framework. Input control, output refine. 
And as a quick reminder, the basic idea of i is that there are two worlds, one with which when you think and the other one within which you work. Input. This is where we take information from the outside world and bring it into your own world. Check out a couple automations. This first automation will allow us to capture information from the external world. We can just select this text that we're interested in, right click on it and save this to our database in Notion with one click. So if we go to a Notion database, here we have the information, we can process it later. And when we're done, we can click on this checkbox to get it archived. Here's another cool automation to capture thoughts on the go. Open Bardeen with a shortcut and click on this automation to capture idea to knowledge base. You can say something like buy milk, hit enter, hit enter again. And this idea was added to our knowledge base. You can open this individual page or the entire database. Let's look on view parent and boom, there is the idea. We can archive it again. What makes Bardeen really cool is that you can launch it from pretty much any tab in your browser and capture ideas without having to switch tabs and look for the right place where to enter information. And finally, the third automation I want to show you uses the data scraper that allows you to capture information from different places on the web page, such as this LinkedIn profile to a destination of your choice. Let's open Bardeen from here and I have the automation that will copy a LinkedIn profile to a predefined Google Sheet. In this case, it's called Prospects. I can click on View, and just like this, the information was saved. Now let's go back to LinkedIn, and I can click on the next person, such as Artem over here, open up Bardeen, click on this card, and then let's switch tabs to see the information. Here we have Artem's information, Let's scroll a little bit more to the right and you can see how many fields were captured with just one click. If I had to copy paste all of this information manually like I usually would, this would be excruciatingly painful. So Scraper is the way to go. Let me show you how this automation works. Let's open up Bardeen and then let's open this automation in the builder. So as you can see, you have the action that captures information and then we have the destination app which in this case is a Google Sheet. The scraper action over here has a required argument that's called a scraper template. A scraper template informs Bardeen what information from a given web page that you want to extract. Let's cancel the input over here and let's build our very own scraper template. So I'm going to click on create new scraper template and pick the web page for which I want to create the template. We have a single page scraper and a list scraper. A list scraper scrapes a list of contacts, for example, and a single page scraper. So we can give this scraper template a name uh, such as LinkedIn, LinkedIn demo, start building. And all you need to do is visually show which fields you want to extract. I want to grab Artem's first name. I can type first name, for example, for this field, grab location. the tagline, and then I can also click on this image over here and pick an image. It's a different data type. You can click on more and see some additional actions. For example, this image has other attributes. Looks like it's 200 by 200. It also has an attribute that's called title. So let's click on get data. And the last piece of information that will be really helpful for me is to get this profile URL. Unfortunately, I cannot click on it because it's not in the body of the page. So I can click on add special field and grab the page URL just like this. And here we have the URL saved as well. I'm going to save this scraper template. So here we have our special scraper template. And then if I click on this Google Sheets action, we already have a specific spreadsheet linked up. And then we have the data coming from action number one. Let's click on done. And for the sake of the experiment, I'm going to delete all of the data from here and see what happens when we run our updated scraper template on this page. Okay, let's go back to this profile, scroll to the left, and here we have our five fields that we just predefined over here, nicely organized. 
or Dean Data Scraper is probably the most effective way to get information saved from the web to your central point of truth. I have a dedicated scraper tutorial that I will link to in the post in the paperless movement down below. Control, that is the part two. This is where you decide what to do with the captured information. And unfortunately, this is where in the world of software tools, a lot of problems begin. Information exists where it was created. For example, where do your events live? In your Google Calendar. They live there and they're inaccessible to any other app. And frankly, to yourself, all you can do is click around. So you don't really have control over your data. Now with Bardeen, you can change all that. Check out this automation. It's going to create a list of all of my meetings within a given time frame in Google Sheets. So I'm going to click on try it. And here I need to specify the start date in our date range. For example, three months ago. That was January 27th until now. And then we're going to try to create a new spreadsheet and call it my meetings. Hit enter, hit enter again. Let's take a look at the spreadsheet. Let's click on view. And here I have a long list of all of my meetings created in just five seconds. Bardeen gives you the full control over your apps. You can grab information from one place such as Google Calendar and then add it to any other app. It can be Airtable, Notion, Asana, you name it. You can export data, you can transfer data, you can manipulate data, it's up to you. Output, this is when you actually produce something valuable. You first create a list, group your tasks, schedule them, and obviously execute. And here's probably why this is the status quo. You can either automate workflows entirely using tools like Zapier, or you'll be forced to do them manually if there's a tiny deviation from the standard process. Here's an example of such workflow. You might want to create a Google meeting, attach a Zoom link to it, and send an email reminder. Sounds simple in theory, but this is where tools like Zapier are going to fail because they do not have context. They don't have information such as the title of the meeting, when the meeting is going to be, who is going to be with. So you're stuck with opening three tabs separately and copying information from one place to another. And as you probably guessed it, this is where Bardeen comes in. It allows you to participate in the automation. It's called human in the loop types of automation. Let's take a look at this specific one. Create a Google Calendar meeting with Zoom. Let's click on try it. So when you run this specific automation, you are asked for this argument, such as when you want the meeting to be, for example, 8 a.m. tomorrow. Here we have the title, breakfast with Elon. Let's do a quick 30 minute meeting. Pick a participant. And now we can run this automation. Let's give it the name. And there we have our Google Calendar meeting with a Zoom link. Let's take a closer look at this playbook to see how you can create variable inputs and automations. Let's open up Bardeen. Let's open this automation in the builder. And here you can see a few arguments. They're called ask me every time parameters. This parameter for the action create event asks for the title of the event over here. So we have the title of the event when we want the event to start, the duration of the event, the participants, etc. So here, if we want to have fixed participants, such as myself, I'm going to input my address over here, phenomenal. But then we might want to also have variable inputs, something that I will specify every time I run the automation. Let's click on ask me every time, and then you can give this variable a name. It can be emails of participants. Under advanced options over here, this can be a required field or an optional field. In my case, I'll make it optional. So I'll untick this field, click on done, click on done again, and see what else we have in this automation. We have create the Zoom meeting, then grab the Zoom meeting link. Then we're going to add the Zoom meeting link to the description of the event. This is our automation. I can also add other actions. Let's click on this plus icon, add action, and pick Gmail, and then find the action that will send an email. Here we need to specify the recipients. 
and we can send this email to the argument email of participants. This is the variable argument that we've created earlier. Then we have the email subject line, new meeting scheduled, for example. You can copy yourself if you want to. That's what I'm going to do. And here you can add the body of the email. It can be the Zoom meeting link. It can be the title of the event. It's up to you how you want to customize it. Let's recap. You no longer need to be stuck between doing something entirely manually or automate everything to run exactly the same way. You can participate in the automation to run it the way you want it to run. Finally, part number four, this is where you refine your workflow. You can either optimize the process or you can automate the process. And frankly, this is my favorite part as an automation geek. Remember that notification, hello world, that we've created in the beginning of the video? Let's optimize and automate it. Let's open it up in the builder. And first, let's try to optimize it. It's a notification. It's meant to remind me of something. A browser notification sounds good, but most of the time I have the focus mode on. And instead, I might want a Slack notification or I might want an SMS reminder. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's keep that browser notification, but let's add another action. And the action is going to send me a text message. There we have it. So we're going to connect SMS notifications, just like this, and add send text message action. I'm going to input my phone number. And the text message should say something like meditate. I'm also going to go to the first action. Instead of hello world, I'm going to say remember to meditate. Change the title. Then let's go to YouTube. Here's a meditation playlist. I'm going to copy the link. Open Bardeen with the option B shortcut. Paste the URL over here, because why not? Let's make it run automatically. I'm going to add a trigger. It's going to be a scheduled trigger. And we're going to run this every day at 1 p.m. This is when I need to meditate the most. The frequency is going to be every day. So by default, it's going to run out after one occurrence. I can specify how many times I want to meditate. I actually want to meditate infinitely. Never stop, click on done, click on done again. And then finally, when you create an auto book, you need to enable it. So make sure to toggle this on. And just like this, here's our refined process. Thank you so much for tuning in this Bardeen deep dive special for the paperless movement members. Okay guys, I hope you like this deep dive into Bardeen. As Renat mentioned, you will find all the links in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel so I can catch you up next time.